Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, May-June 2021, paper 3, 3, question number 4. This is structured paper 3, which consists 6 questions, each of 25 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 3 hours. So we will be attempting to solve each question under 30 minutes. And this question number 4 is a part of section A, which relates to financial accounting. Now without any further delay, let's get started. Tan owns a shop in her local town selling ornaments. Tan and Wang entered a joint venture to sell ornaments in a city festival market in 2020. Tan purchased goods from her local producers in a small town and Wang sold the products in his local city. Alright, then profit will be shared equally and each party would record their own transactions. Now we are given the receipts and payments relating to the joint venture. Purchase of goods is an expense, rent of stall is also an expense, cash register is also an expense in order to purchase that particular register. Then we have transportation expenses, assistance wages, which is also an expense. There is sales, which is actually an income. Then we have packaging costs, which is also an expense. Okay, then at the end of the joint venture, Wang took over the cash register and unsold ornaments at the value of 2000 and 3100 respectively. So cash register, which we bought, so that was taken over by Wang at the end of the joint venture and unsold ornaments. So unsold ornaments is just going to be the remaining goods, right? Which we can term as inventory. And the inventory was also taken over by Wang at the price of 3,100. Okay, now for the first part of this question, we need to see three features of a joint venture. Let's do that. What we know is that joint venture is not actually a uh, business that we used to deal with before. Joint venture is formed in order to complete a specific project or a business activity. Let's write it down. Joint venture is formed for a specific project or business activity and secondly joint venture is of temporary nature because once this specific project or this specific business activity is done we end the joint venture so we can categorize it as a business of temporary nature let's write it down joint venture is of temporary nature and lastly joint venture should consist two or more parties let's write it down joint venture consists of two or more parties or persons Okay, so this concludes the first part of this question. Now we can move to the second one. We need to prepare the following accounts. So the first one is the joint venture account, which we can also remember as a memorandum joint venture account. And this is a ledger account that actually records our incomes and expenses relating to the joint venture. And all of the expenses that we incurred while running our joint venture will be recorded on the debit side, whereas all of the incomes that we recognize will be recorded on our credit side. So let's have a look above at our receipts and payments relating to the joint venture. So we already categorized the expenses and incomes, but while recording it in our memorandum joint venture account, we actually record the total expenses bared by both parties. So let's just figure out the total amounts. So purchase of goods has only one amount, which is 46,000. So that's going to be the total. Similarly, for rent of stall, there's only 12,000. So that's the total. That's the case for cash register as well. The total is 2,600. Now for transportation, the total is just going to be 2,450 plus 980, which results in 3,430. For assistance wages, that's again 2,770 plus 5,400, which results in 8,170. Then we have sales amounting to 95,400. And finally, we have the packaging cost, which is 620 plus 4080, which results in the total cost of 4700. So now we just have to record all of our expenses on the debit side of our memorandum joint venture account. So let's start with purchase of goods amounting to 46,000. Let's write it down. 
I'm just going to create a line in between okay so on the debit side we record our expenses and the first one was purchase of goods and it amounted to 46,000 let's have a look above the second expense that we have is the rent of stall amounting to 12,000 so let's write it down as well this also goes on our debit side so that's rent of stall amounting to 12,000 again let's have a look above the third one is the cash register amounting to 2,600 that's an expense as well so it goes on our debit side that's 2,600 all right then for the fourth one we have transportation expenses amounting to 3,430 let's write it down this amounted to 3430 let's have a look at our information again after transportation we have assistance wages which is an expense to the joint venture and it amounts to 8170 let's record it since it is an expense it goes on our debit side so that's assistance wages and this amounted to 8170 all right then for the last expense we have our packaging costs amounting to 4700 that's packaging 4700 okay now we will move towards recording our incomes so the first major source of income is obviously sales which amounted to 95400 this will be recorded on our credit side let's do that so we have sales amounting to 95400 and we are also given an additional information so let's have a look there we already recorded all of these information so now we move on to this one at the end of the joint venture wang took over the cash register at the value of 2000 so while wang took over the cash register he actually paid the amount of 2000 into the joint venture which means that this 2000 acts as an income to our joint venture right so this must be recorded on our credit side under the heading of cash register taken over let's do that so that's cash register taken over by wang at the value of 2000 which acts as an income to our joint venture now wang also took over the unsold ornaments or inventory at the value of 3100 again wang needs to pay this particular amount while taking the inventory which means that this amount of 3100 acts as an income to our joint venture so this must be recorded on our credit side under the heading of inventory taken over with the amount of 3100 let's do that we have inventory taken over for the value of 3100 now we have recorded all of our incomes and expenses provided in the question now we move towards figuring out whether there was a profit on joint venture or loss on joint venture in order to do so we first need to find our total for the debit and credit side and see which side is the heavier one let's figure out the total for the debit side so for that we add all of these amounts that's going to be 46,000 plus 12,000 plus 2,600 plus 3,430 plus 8,170 plus 4,700 which gives us the total of 76,900. Now let's repeat the same process for the credit side. In order to figure out the total for the credit side we just need to add these three amounts so that's 95,400 plus 2000 plus 3100 which gives us the total of 100,500. Now we can clearly see that the credit side has the higher total as compared to that of the debit side which means that the credit side is the heavier side. So what we know is that we recorded all of our expenses on the debit side and all of our incomes on the credit side. And if the income is higher, then there must have been profit on joint venture, right? So that profit will actually act as the balancing figure on our debit side. So we can just write it down as profit. And we actually need to divide this profit among the parties in our joint venture, which are Dan and Wang. Okay, so this actually acts as our balancing figure. 
now we just need to write down the total amount so the total is just going to be the heavier size amount which is 100,500 this must be true for debit side as well now I already said that profit acts as a balancing figure and in order to figure out our value of the balancing figure we just have to deduct all of these amounts from the total so we already have the total for these amounts which is 76,900 now in order to figure out the profit we just need to subtract this amount from our total of 100,500 so that's just going to be 100,500 minus 76,900 which gives our profit to be 23,600 all right now let's have a look at the above information regarding our division of profit so what we know is that the profit will be shared equally so just now we figured out that there was a profit of 23,600 in our joint venture. Now while dividing this profit among Tan and Wang, we just need to divide it equally. Let's do that. For Tan, it's just going to be 23,600 divided by 2. And same goes for Wang. And 23,600 divided by 2 gives us the amount of 11,800, which will be the profit for both of our parties, Tan and Wang. Alright, so this concludes our joint venture account. Now we can move to the second part. We are told to prepare the joint venture with Tan account in Wang's book. Again, this is similar to what we just did above, but we're only recording the joint venture in Wang's book, meaning that Wang will only record his particular incomes and expenses in his books. So we are only concerned with his amounts now instead of the total one. Alright, so this is also ledger account that's the debit side that's the credit side this is very similar to what we just did above so meaning that we record all of our expenses on the debit side and the incomes on the credit side but now since we're preparing the joint venture with tan account in wang's books we only record the amounts relating to wang so let's have a look at the above information Okay, we know that Wang paid the rent of stall amounting to 12,000, which is an expense which we will record in our debit side. Let's do that. So, rent of stall amounted to 12,000. Let's have a look above. We completely ignored the purchase of goods because this was actually paid by Tan. And since we're preparing the joint venture account in Wang's books, we are only concerned with this column now. All right, nextly, Wang also paid an amount of 2,600 for cash register. So that's an expense which must be recorded on the debit side. Let's do that. We have cash register. And we actually need to indicate that these amounts are being paid into the bank or the cash. So we can just write it down as cash cash paid for cash register so this amounted to 2600 let's repeat the same process again for the next part we have the transportation cost of 980 paid by wang which is again an expense which must be recorded on our debit side so let's do that again we should be indicating cash paid for transportation and this amounted to 980 Okay, nextly, we have an amount of 5,400 for assistant wages, meaning that this is an amount paid, which is an expense. So this must be recorded on our debit side. Let's do that. Again, cash is being paid for assistant's wages. And bank paid the amount of 5,400. All right. Now we have the sales amount amounting to 95,400. So this is actually an income and all of the sales were made by Wang. So this must be recorded as an income in Wang's books as well. So we record this amount in our credit side. Let's do that. We have sales with the amount of 95,400. All right, then we have the packaging cost of 4080 paid by Wang. 
This is an expense which must be recorded on the debit side. Let's do that. Again, cash is being paid by Wang for packaging. And this amounted to 4080 Now, we already figured out Wang's share of profit as well, right? And according to our format of the joint venture account, the share of profit is always recorded on the debit side. So let's write down the heading. That's share of profit. Let's have a look above. We figured out the share of profit for Wang and Tang to be 11,800. So let's record it. 11,800. Okay, let's have a look above. We are given additional information relating to Wang because he took over the cash register and unsold ornaments. Like I said before, this amount of 2,000 and 3,100 acts as an income to the joint venture because these amounts are being received by the joint venture. And Wang actually is the cause for the joint venture to receive this account, which means that these two cases of cash register being taken over and inventory taken over should also be recorded in our Wang's book. So we must record it. And since these are incomes, we will record these in our credit side. So let's do that. We have cash register taken over. With the value of 2000. And we have inventory taken over. With the value of 3100. Okay, so now the purpose of this joint venture in Wang's books is to figure out whether he owes some particular amount to the joint venture or he actually is to receive some particular amount from the joint venture. And in order to do so, we need to figure out the total for both the debit side as well as the credit side. Let's figure out the total for the debit side first. So that's just going to be the sum of these amounts, which is 12,000 plus 2,600 plus 980 plus 5,400 plus 4,080 plus 11,800, which gives our total of the debit side to be 36,860. Now we repeat the same process for credit side. So that's going to be the sum of these three amounts, which is 95,400 plus 2,000 plus 3,100, which results in a total of 100,500. So we can clearly see that the credit side is greater than the debit side which means that our balancing figure must be on our debit side. And whenever the balancing figure is on the debit side, that indicates the cash yet to be paid to our joint venture account, which means that Wang needs to pay a certain amount to the joint venture, which means that he owes that certain amount to Tan. So we can term our balancing figure as cash to Tan. Okay, now in order to figure out the balancing figure, we require our total amount first, which is going to be the balance on the heavier side, which we just figured out to be 100,500. Let's write it down. That must be the same case for debit side as well. So that's 100,500. Now, as I said before, cash return acts as a balancing figure. And whenever we are trying to figure out the balance on the balancing figure, we just need to subtract all of these amounts from our total. And in this case, we already know the total value of these amounts, which is 36,860. So in order to figure out our balancing figure, we just have to deduct this amount from the total. So that's 100,500 minus 36,860, which gives the cash owed by Wang to Tan to be 63,640. Okay, now this concludes the second part. We can move to the third one. We are now asked to prepare the joint venture with Wang account in Tan's book. So we repeat the same process as we did before, but instead of looking at Wang's particular expenses and incomes, we now only look at Tan's incomes and expenses. So let's prepare the ledger. This is the debit side. This is the credit side. Again, we record our expenses relating to Tan on our debit side, whereas we record the incomes relating to Tan on our credit side. So let's have a look at the above information. We are now preparing the joint venture account in Tan's books, meaning that we only view Tan's receipts and payments. So we are only concerned with this particular column. Now we can see that the first one is an expense relating to purchase of goods, which is being paid by Tan and that amounted to 46,000. 
and this is an expense so we need to record this on our debit side let's do that so Dan paid cash for the purchase of goods and this amounted to 46,000 okay now we repeat the same process the next one is the amount of 2450 relating to transportation expense so since this is an expense we must record it on our debit side as well let's do that cash is being paid for transportation and it amounted to 2450 Okay, the third one is the amount of 2770 relating to assistance wages, which is again an expense. So this must be recorded on the debit side as well. Let's do that. So cash is being paid for assistance wages and this amounted to 2770. Let's have a look at the above information again. Okay, we have the last one amounting to 620, which relates to the packaging. Again, it's an expense, so this must be recorded on the debit side as well. Let's do that. So cash is being paid for packaging. And this amounted to 620. All right, so like we did before, now we have to record the share of profit for a tan. And as I said before, the share of profit, according to our format, is always recorded on the debit side. So let's write it down. Let's have a look above. We already figured out our share of profit. And for 10, that was 11,800. So let's record this amount. And we saw that there was no incomes relating to 10. So we can easily say that debit side is the heavier side because there is no amount on the credit side, which means that our balancing figure will be on the credit side. Now, if the balancing figure was on the debit side, that represented cash owed by Dan. But since it's on the credit side, we can term it as cash yet to receive from Wang. So that's cash from Wang. And this acts as a balancing figure. And in order to figure out the balancing figure, we first require the total value. So let's figure out the total from our debit side. That's just going to be the sum of these five amounts. That's 46,000 plus 2,450 plus 2,770 plus 620 plus 11,800, which gives the total of 63,640. Now, the total must be the same for credit side as well. So that's 63,640. And for balancing figure, we actually needed to subtract the amounts. But since we have no amount in here, the total amount is actually going to be the balancing figure. So that's 63,640. Now, another way to verify our joint venture accounts is to tally the amount yet to receive and yet to pay. So we can see that the amount yet to be received by Tan from Wang is 63,640. And we can see that we also figured out our amount owed by Wang to Tan to be 63,640, which is actually the same. So this indicates that our joint venture account is actually correct. So this completes the third part and this also completes the entire second part of this question. Now we can move to the third one. We are given additional information. From Tan's experience of joint venture in the city festival market, she has found that the goods are well accepted by the city people. She now plans to sell the ornaments in the city through Wang as a consignee. So this means that Tan will be the consigner and Wang will be the consignee. So Tan will be sending the goods to Wang in order for him to sell it. And in return, Wang will be getting certain commission amount. And Tan will get to keep the entire profit from the consignment. Now for the third part of this question, we need to explain two benefits to each of Tan and Wang of selling the ornaments in the city on consignment. All right, so let's start with benefits to Tan. And Tan will actually act as the consigner. So what we know is that from the experience of joint venture in the city festival market, Tan is willing to sell 
her goods to the city people, right? So the benefit that she gets is to explore a new market in the city with long-term prospect. Because joint venture, as we said before, is of temporary nature. So once the project is finished, she stopped it. But in case of the consignment, so consignment can be a long-term project, right? So this gives her with the long-term exploration of new market. Let's write it down. Explore a new market in the city with long-term prospect. And I listed before that Tan will get the entire profit. So that's also a benefit. Let's write it down. She takes all the profits but after deducting the commission. So that's after paying commission to Wang. Okay, now we can move towards the benefits to Wang. And what we know is that Wang in this case will be the consignee. So the very first benefit of any consignee is that they do not have to bear any risk because they are not responsible for the loss from trading. They are only liable to a commission they make while selling the goods, but they do not have to bear any sort of losses incurred. Let's write it down. He has no risk as he is not responsible for the loss from trading. Similar to no risk, he also does not have to bear any cost because all of the cost beared will actually be reimbursed by 10. Let's write it down. He is not required to bear any cost as all costs incurred will be reimbursed by 10. All right, so this concludes the third part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.